If something is off with my pool game, no matter what game I'm playing or practicing, and I suspect that it's my rhythm or associated to my rhythm, sometimes I'll, I'll switch to playing six ball for an hour or two. And what this does is it kind of just simplifies everything and reduces everything down to the basics. And it reduces all the clutter. And at the same time, because, you know, if, if you're a decent nine ball player, you should be running racks of six ball. Uh, it'll boost your confidence a little bit. It'll get you back in rhythm and get you back to playing the way you're supposed to be playing. And then you can go back to practicing nine ball or ten ball or eight ball or whatever you're doing. In six ball, you almost never want to break from the center. At the head string from the line, um, you almost always want to be a ball or two off center, whether it's the right side or the left side of center. And it all depends on the break spot of your table. Every table plays different, and each table changes every single 24 hours. If we look at this particular rag, we can see the five ball and the four ball are both the corner balls. And both of those balls are dead in their respective corners, but it's not straight in dead. If we look at just the five ball, we can see that it's going to the short rail, short of the pocket right there, and it's coming back a little past the second diamond on the next rail. And it's going all the way short of center to the other short rail, bouncing off to about the third diamond on, on the right hand rail, and the line, the path is straight into that respective pocket. And it's the exact opposite for the four ball. The reason you don't want to break from the center of the table is because both that four ball and that five ball will hit those first rails at the same exact time. And by the time they wrap around the table, they're going to be on a collision course right almost center of the table. So if we break from the left side of the table, just a hair to the left, it doesn't have to be much. The four ball should reach the end rail a little bit before the five ball does. And if we break from the right side, the five ball will hit the rail first. This way the balls will be staggered and they won't collide in the middle. One will go around the table before the other. The interesting thing about the six ball break is, is while the corner balls explode off the rack, the other four balls barely move at all. They kind of just trickle to where they're going. We're getting a Newton's cradle effect going on here. So we have this uneven weight distribution here, and with nine ball, you have three more balls in the back of the rack, which evens out the weight of the rack, and that's why when you hit them right in nine ball, the rack just explodes everywhere. With six ball, you, you don't want to break like you would in nine ball. You're not trying to park the cue ball in the center of the table because, again, you don't want to get in the way of those 
you know, like there's two crossing balls. But that's not the only reason. If, if you hit them too hard, you need to hit them hard, but not nine ball hard. Because if you do that, you're going to come up short of making those balls in the corner pockets. And you don't have to make, you know, both balls. Chances are good that one one of the balls is going to hit another ball in the rack. So, of course, you know, you want to make one of the balls, but you don't need to make both. If you do, it's just kind of a happy bonus there. In the next couple clips, I'll show you exactly what happens when you hit them too hard and when you try to break six ball like you do or like you would in nine ball. On the left hand side we have the three ball on the corner and the other side we have the two ball but the two ball runs into something so I want you to keep a, an eye on the three ball particularly. It came up short of the pocket and hit the long round. This is what's going to happen when you try to break like Danny Medina playing six ball. So save the super break for nine ball and ten ball. This one you need to lighten up a little bit and spend more time considering getting that cue ball out of the way. And we're going to look at another break too hard and show you what happens with the cue ball when you do this. And again we have the three ball on this corner and we have the two ball on the other side. So... Wait a minute. Did you see that? The cue ball hit both of those corner balls and neither one of them ever had a prayer or they were reaching any pocket. Another big reason you don't want to park. And on the other hand, you don't want to hit them too soft either because then those corner balls will never make it to their intended pockets. And we can see here the five ball is heading straight to that pocket and just does not get there. It runs out of gas. And that's because I hit them too soft. So there's obviously a happy medium here and you have to find it. There's another one that's just too soft. So in this example, the three ball is a little bit off the line, but the four ball is going straight at the pocket and is guaranteed, you know, pocketed ball. But it just does not have enough momentum to get there. The three ball comes up short of the pocket, but the four ball was on target and just ran out of gas. Here's another example where it's just a bad break and I don't get the cue ball out of the way and that right hand corner ball which is the three winds up colliding with the cue ball the four ball which is on the other side of the, you know, the four ball does have a chance um, but it gets caught up in all the confusion going on with the cluster so there's another bad one so this is just becoming the smorgasbord of bad breaks. On the left side we have again the four ball, on the right side we have the five. And the cue ball gets in the way of the four, and the one ball gets in the way of the five. Another bad one. So, I mean, it's important to know what not to do as much as it is to know what to do. To do. So we have the five ball on the left hand, and we have, I think it's the three ball on the right hand. And this one, both of them were hidden on track. Everything is a little close there. And they both just kind of run out of gas. It was too soft. Hit them like, oh, let's see some good stuff here. None of it is going to, you know, do anything right unless the rack is tight. So always check your rack. Make sure it's straight. And check your opponent's rack, too, if you're gambling. And just make sure everything's tight and straight. And it's imperative to have that six ball tight, too, because it's, it's another part of a hustle to keep that six ball loose. So everything in the rack looks tight, but the six ball is not and that's going to screw up the break big time.
Yeah, we cut the cue ball loose a little bit, but that's good. That's exactly what you want out of a rack right there. And let's get off to all the negative stuff and get on to some more good stuff here. I can see the three balls, the corner ball on this side. I'm not sure what the other side is. Two balls. There goes the three. Good job. Some more good stuff, maybe? Let's see what you got, Jack. Three ball on the other side, and boom. That's it. That's what you want. You on the six ball pro tour. Boom, Bosa. There it is. Yeah, so we, you know, Big K is getting the cube out of the way. I think it's best to draw it back off the rack because the one ball's coming down toward us. So we should get the cue ball down there too. Just a little bit of draw off the rack. And this one's from a different day, so I do, you know, mess with this quite often. I can tell because I'm wearing that Rolling Stone shirt. I think this is the last video I have from that day. And you can see both corner balls went. So, you know, I mean, this is a simple run out. Um, let's just keep it rolling and we'll put another couple more breaking runs here and close this out. I think you get the gist of this. Mm -hmm.